Well, that result in Cardiff has lifted Wales to world number one for the first time. Uh, and we are going to chat to one of the most important players for the Welsh uh, heading into the World Cup. Ross Moriarty's on the line. How are you, mate? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Mate, we're very good, mate. First and foremost, um, how's the old man? <laughs> yeah, he's good. He's good. Um, he's enjoying his agency work, so it's a bit different to coaching. But no, I'm happy for him. He's really enjoying himself. And uh, whereabouts are you right now? Because when we rang through, it was a foreign ringtone. So on holiday again? Yeah, uh, not quite holiday. We're just uh, we're in training camp, but it's a day off today, so I have to peel myself off for some bed. <laughs> Tough gig. Where, where's the training camp, mate? Yeah, it's in Turkey, so forty degrees. Oh, <laughs> mate, that's Turkey. That's a stag do. To Turkey? Mate, that is a stag do because they're world number one. How how good does it feel to be world number one at the minute? Does it make any difference? Of the lads have been talking about it, as Warren said much. Um, obviously, it's uh, you know, we're all really proud to be ranked up to that number one spot, but we all know the end goal is to win the World Cup at the end of the day, and that's where we'll uh, we'll judge ourselves. Mate, me and Goody have been talking, we spoke over the last couple of weeks about, it's probably a bit harsh really, but it's, it's true, it's, it's the opinion. The warm-up games are probably, well, they're definitely not at the test match level that we've seen during the Six Nations and stuff. How have you found that? I mean, last week was a tougher game for you, obviously won this week, but a player that's at the coal phase of it, how have you found the standard of the two games? Um, obviously, you know, it's like coming into your first pre-season game. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to hard to sort of emulate that top, top of the world game. And um, I think that first one, we were a bit down and our emotions were quite low. And I think that definitely showed But on the weekend, being back in the millennium and um, obviously having a lot of talking to two over the week, I think we were emotionally there and it showed. And then just looking back, obviously, Grand Slam champions um, and now, obviously, we, we've talked about it, but world number one in the rankings. There's an, an air of expectation from outside of perhaps the camp now that Wales are massive um, sort of challenges to, to win this World Cup. Um, what's the chat like inside? Is it just sort of keeping your feet on the ground? I know Warren uh, and Sean Edwards are very motivating people. It, it, there's obviously a, a massive opportunity here for Wales to do something they've never done before. Yeah, uh, you know, over the last uh, year or so, we've been doing great as a team. Brought a lot of new players in uh, who have done really well, and it's been um, it's been great for the squad. And that shows now towards these warm up games. Um, you know, the the different combinations we could put together, which is what we need in the World Cup, because sometimes as people get injured, they have to play in different roles, and that's what it's all about. So we're just um, keeping our feet on the ground. The coaches are, are definitely aren't picking us up. They're working us into the, into the ground still, so there's no layoff there. But we're all just looking forward to getting out to Japan if we get selected. Mate, you mentioned injury there. Uh, we'll, we'll chat about it. Gareth Anscombe um, last week picked up a bad injury. I can't believe he actually play, played on with when it looked quite bad. But how's that hit the camp? How's he? I know he's had surgery he posted on social media, but what's been said around yeah, him? Uh, um, yeah, you know, uh, Gareth is a great boy. Uh, it was really sad to see him have to have an operation and um, you know he's going to be off for quite a long time but I spoke to him after the game he said it felt fine but you know it's uh, you never know you can walk on the pitch and walk off think everything's alright and next minute you're out for eight months but um, you can't go into these games with a like mind you have to you have to throw everything into it otherwise you'll end up getting hurt and that wasn't the case for Gareth but you can't hold back because the coaches will be seeing that in selection as well and then, obviously, uh, looking at the Welsh squad, there's quite a few characters in there. Um, you're, you're away on a stag do now in Turkey. One of my favourite players I've ever played with, uh, Bradley Davis. Um, <laughs> yeah. How much is he moaning at the 40-degree heat out there in Turkey? Uh, well, he's been called my older brother, so I have to room with Brad. So, um, yeah, me and Bradley, we, uh, we room together. Obviously, we know each other very well. Um, he's actually he hasn't come out in the sun yet today. He said he's going to wait until five o'clock this afternoon <laughs> when the sun's basically gone. So, yeah, he loves the heat. He is pasty, isn't he? Mate, uh, well, uh, yeah. most Welsh people, Goody. Um, so, talking about most Welsh people, so, Ross, you are fully-fledged Welsh now. Uh, obviously, we chatted last time that you grew up through the England system. How is it? Uh, you're obviously past the, the weird stage of play, play, playing against England, playing against lads that you played in the age groups with, but how was it, you know, England being the biggest game probably on the, on the calendar for most most teams. How is it for you personally facing them? Um, oh, you know, it, obviously, like I said in the past, it's great to come through the system with England and the opportunities to give me. Um, but as you know, you know what I'm like. I, I'm, 
I am fully Welsh and um, it's always a big motivator for me to play against England and obviously to beat them because I know what it means to the people. So um, obviously it was disappointing last week, uh, week four last, but the weekend just gone, it was, uh, it was a great feeling. And then a little bit on Dragons as well. I can't remember if we had you on before you signed for Dragons or, or after, but a few changes there. Dean Ryan's obviously at the helm. But for you personally, um, how are you going to find that playing in the Pro 14? It'll probably give you a bit, a bit of respite uh, to be fit for the internationals as you're coming into your prime. But for you personally? Um, I'm not too sure what this will be like after the uh, World Cup, but um, we've, uh, we've met with Dean and he seems like a really good bloke and I know he has really good intentions for the club. Uh, we've made a few signings, obviously Sam Davis uh, being very key in that, and I'm just, I'm just looking forward to see what we can do. And you know, it's always exciting. I didn't get to play too much last season, so this year I'm definitely going to be uh, putting my my best in and more. And then obviously uh, you can just come back to your roommate Brad Davis. Um, is he still having his can of coke for breakfast? Can of coke zero cherry, or is that something that Warren's beaten out of no. him? Now? No, Bradley is really strict as well, actually. So I think he may have been doing that a few years ago, which I may still do now. But um, yeah, I definitely see myself turning into a bit like him. <laughs> well, mate, all his teeth are falling out now, mate. So there's no wonder that he's not drinking it. Um, last question yeah. as well. You're going well off the field. We're seeing on Instagram uh, the new business that you've started. Um, track Athletic, I'm right saying, or is it just Track? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, track athletic. Cool, okay. mate. I know. Talk, talk us a little bit about that. Firstly, have you got a Fat Boy Slim T-shirt for Goody that make him look good? Um, and then secondly, just tell us a little bit about it. I know it's kind of building a bit of momentum before you launch properly. Yeah, I think uh, we may be struggling for Goody at the moment. Oh, come but, on, uh, mate. I've lost a stone. I've sure, put on I'm two. Sure, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll be able to sort something out for him. Um, but, yeah, I've got, got a few friends that I've met in the, when I was over in Cheltenham. Uh, who were involved in some clothing companies, and you know they they great boys. They all obviously want to want to make something and do well for themselves. And I was happy to help. And you know, I, you know, it's like rugby doesn't last forever. And if this can be successful for me, then I'd be really happy with myself. But I'd rather try it. If it fails, it fails. But if it goes well, then I'm really happy. So you know, it's uh, it's something I'm taking a punt at. And then, how will people find you? So, if they're looking to to get involved or looking to buy some some stash, how do they get get you? Um, yeah, so the website's up and running. I think this week. So, um, track track athletic dot co dot uk. Um, obviously, Instagram's a big one for us, where you can just search it and it'll come up. Or go onto my Instagram, and that will be the link in the bio. So, yeah, everyone everyone get onto it. Mate, you're looking lit on Instagram anyway. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, lit the word. Yeah, can you can you do a t-shirt that's yeah. baggy, baggy around the belly and tight on the arms? I'll be that'll be a good fit for me, I think. I I can sort something out. I'll sort something out for you, do Good man, Ledge. All right, Ross. Thank you so much Ciao. for joining us. Uh, congratulations on the Ciao. world number one ranking and uh, best of luck for the World Cup, mate.